Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Those of you that follow my channel know that I do not do a lot of videos on the application called Lightroom. Now, that's not to be confused with the application called Lightroom Classic, because many of you know I do a lot of videos on Lightroom Classic. The other app, the app that Adobe calls Lightroom, and some people call Lightroom CC, or Lightroom in the Cloud, or Lightroom Mobile, that application just isn't as popular as Lightroom Classic. By my estimation, Lightroom Classic users outnumber Lightroom users like 50 to 1. But Lightroom is still a great application, and you could do just about everything as far as editing and sorting of your images in it that you can do in Lightroom Classic. It may be missing a feature here or there. Now, it doesn't have some major features that Lightroom Classic has, like a slideshow module or a book module or a really expansive print module and stuff like that. But as far as editing your images with Lightroom, it's great. Now, the main difference, though, between the two apps is that Lightroom Classic users keep their images stored locally. Lightroom users, on the other hand, although the images are stored locally, they're also synced to the cloud so that you could use Lightroom on several different computers and be able to access your edited images from all those different computers. Furthermore, there are mobile versions of Lightroom which are cosmetically very similar to Lightroom. No, I'm not talking about Lightroom Classic. Very similar to Lightroom. And you could also access those cloud synced images on your mobile device, be it a tablet or a smartphone, and do edits there as well. So a lot of people like that freedom and they often use different computers or they use mobile devices and they like to edit their images that way. So in today's video, I'm just going to do an overview of Lightroom by editing an image in it. Now, I'm right now, if I go over here, you could see I'm in this more or less library module of Lightroom. You can see I have the images in a grid view. And here, you know, you could give it a star rating, color label. Um, it doesn't have collections, but it has something called the albums, which are the exact same thing as collections. So you could also gather images from different folders and put them in an album, which is, again, the same thing as a Lightroom Classic collection. So you could do a lot of what you can do in the library module of Lightroom Classic here in Lightroom as well. Now, I want to just show you an edit. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit this image. It's just a raw file that hasn't, ha doesn't have any edits on it at all. I'm going to get rid of the film strip by hitting the forward slash key. A lot of the keyboard shortcuts are the same, but a lot of the keyboard shortcuts are different. So there will be a bit of a learning, learning curve with this version of Lightroom if you're coming over from Lightroom Classic, particularly if you use a lot of keyboard shortcuts. You might um, find that it's a little more um, maybe intuitive in some ways with this version of Lightroom. Anyway, let's start with the edit. I have the image here. It's an unedited raw file. And you can see on the right-hand side are pretty much the tools you'll use to edit an image, similar to the develop module of Lightroom Classic. Um, at the top, we could add presets to it. You can see those smart tool tips pop up. Um, there's no way to turn those off, by the way, in Lightroom. Uh, so they are sometimes annoying if you don't want to see them. Um, you can turn them off in Lightroom Classic, by the way. So we'll close down. We're not going to use a preset. Um, we could do an automatic editing by clicking auto there. Um, we could convert it to black and white there. We have our profiles here and we have the full profile browser here. So nothing is missing here compared to Lightroom Classic as far as profiles are concerned. I'll stay with the default Adobe Color Profile. Then we'll go to Light, this is like the basic tab in Lightroom. One thing to keep in mind, uh, Lightroom Classic, I should say. Uh, one thing to keep in mind about this version of Lightroom. Uh, there is, There are a lot of uh, tools and controls embedded in other controls. For example, I opened up Light and it has the sliders you would expect, but right here it has point curve as well. So if you want to access the curve, and also the, um, you know, all the parametric curve and so on. If you want to access all that stuff, um, you'll have to open a plate. So if you have light closed and you're going, oh, there's no tone curve. 
Well, there actually is a tone curve. It's just embedded in this tab, the light tab. So let's do an edit here. It's really kind of dark. I underexposed it. I exposed for the sky. So I'm going to open up shadows and it's not really opening up shadows a lot. What I often do when I have an image that is underexposed like this image and I open up shadows and if shadows don't open it up enough, what I'll do then is immediately go to highlights and do what you think you shouldn't do and pull that all the way down. Now I don't often do that. I'll only do that when I have images that are underexposed like this image is. Then I'll jump up to exposure and I'll just keep moving exposure up till it looks properly exposed. So that's what I'll do there. So that looks properly exposed. Next I'll get a white and black point. And again, those of you that are familiar with Lightroom Classic, uh, the same exact uh, method can be used here where you hold in the Alt or Option key, Alt on a PC, Option on a Mac, click with the white slider, and you'll see the screen turns black. And you can move it to the right till you start to see some colors come through. And I'll just back it off till that's gone. Similarly for the blacks, I'll get a black point the same way, holding the option key on my Mac, Alt key on PC, and move it to the left this time. So I see some colors coming through. I like to clip the shadows a little bit. Those of you that watch my videos know I like that. I like, it gives me, I think, a lot of tonal depth. So that might look pretty good. Maybe I'll just move it just a little more. And that looks pretty good. So I'm done with light. I'm not going to do anything with the point curve or the curve at all. So I'll close that down. We'll jump down to color, and all I'm going to do here is add a little bit of saturation. And embedded in color is what they call color mix mixer. This is like the HSL tab, and by default it will look like this. This is like the color tab. If you have HSL slash color in Lightroom Classic, this is the color section of that tab. But you can access the individual um, um, panels of hue, saturation, and luminance. So we can do that. Now I'm going to come back to this. I don't want to edit this yet. We also have color grading embedded in here as well. What I want to do is I want to edit the sky and then I'll come back and I'll affect the colors overall with the color mixer tab that is embedded in the color tab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a mask and masking is over here on the right and it has all the same mask that Lightroom Classic has and you can see this I'll do this quick tour later. Well, I shouldn't have did that. All right, got it. All right, uh, we're going to select the sky. So you can see that it gave us the overlay on the sky. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn contrast up. And I'm going to turn clarity up. And add some texture as well. Okay, that's all I'm going to do as far as masking is concerned for this image. Now we'll go back up to the edit panel and we'll go back to color and I'll go back down to color mixer and I do want the luminance sub tab and here I want to make the blue sky darker so I'm going to go to the blue slider and move this down. I don't want it ridiculously dark. Just a little bit dark. And the grass just looks boring to me so I want to bring some tonal variance there so what I'm going to do is make it, I'm going to take yellow and make it any yellow aspects of that grass brighter by moving this to the right. And then I'll go to green and make any green darker. So you could see how we, we have a little more tonal variance, a little more interest in the grass in doing that. I have these red doors out here. I want to make those a little more saturated. So I'm going to go to the saturation sub tab and go to red. And I'm just going to boost that up. And actually, for this image, I am almost done. Now let's just take a little quick tour of the other uh, tabs we have here. In effects, typical effects, um, I could add some texture and clarity to the entire image. So these are global. I could do dehaze. I could go to the vignette, add a little bit of a darker vignette on there. I like darker vignette, kind of puts everyone attention more towards the middle. I don't want to add any grain. So you can see how these sliders um, are in Lightroom Classic, but they're in different parts of Lightroom Classic compared to this version of Lightroom. Then we'll go to Detail, and it already gave me a default amount of sharpening here. This image doesn't really need to be critically sharp. I think it looks pretty good, and I think it was shot um, at very low ISO, probably ISO 100. Um, I think I used a Sony camera on this, so it was ISO 100. So I think that looks good. Let's go to optics and let's, uh, it's already enabled uh, lens corrections. We could click chromatic aberration as well. You can see in here we have defringe embedded in there. 
you need to defringe it. And geometry, it is um, odd. It looks kind of crooked. Let me go to... Um, yeah, it's, it is a tiny bit crooked, but what I'm going to do instead of that, I'm going to go to geometry because this building looks kind of funky to me. So what I'm going to do in geometry, I'm going to go to upright and I'm going to go to auto. Yeah, that makes it look a little more realistic, I think. Yeah. Let me go to this, make sure it's straight. Yeah, it's pretty straight. Like I'm looking at the horizon line right here. And it looks pretty good. And I think I'm actually done. That is uh, my edit on this image. There's before. And there's after. All right, get rid of this tip. There's before. And there is after. And there's before one more time for the people in the back. And there is after. So that's a real quick edit using Lightroom. Now again, um, the advantage of using this version of Lightroom is this image and the edit are synced to the cloud. And if I open up my iPad and open up Lightroom in my iPad, I'll be able to access this image and all those edits will be there. And I could re-edit it or continue editing or just reset it and start over if I want. I could go to my phone and do the same thing. I could go to my MacBook and do the same thing. And you can't really do that with Lightroom Classic. So that's the advantage of using this version of Lightroom. So in the comments below, let me know if you want me to do more videos on this version of Lightroom, maybe on the mobile versions as well. The version I have an iPhone, I could do it on my iPhone. I have an iPad Pro, I could do it on that. Just let me know in the comments below. I can't promise that I'm going to do as many videos as I do on Lightroom Classic. It's just Lightroom Classic. Classic is still much more popular and a lot more people, uh, I could help a lot more people with their editing by doing those Lightroom Classic videos than I can doing these Lightroom videos, but I don't mind doing them now and then uh, because I know there are some people that still use this application exclusively and they don't use Lightroom Classic at all. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.